months ago, Brother Larry came to me and said, hey, God's laid a message on my heart. I'd like to share it. And I said, well, okay. I said, I'll give you an opportunity, and this morning is that opportunity. We scheduled that out, and uh, unbeknownst to me and him both, today was Father's Day uh, when we when we done that, but I'm cool with it. It's good. And uh, so, Brother Larry, won't you come and bless our hearts this morning with the Word of God? Yeah. Come on, Grandpa. Good. Yeah, that is a big ear. You're right. <laughs> My wife says I got a big enough mouth there, microphone, so I was going to try it either way. But, you know, it's so such an honor to be in a church to where there's so much love. And for the kids, the little ones, the teenagers, to call me grandpa. Well, I tell you what, that is an honor. I, you know, I try to set an example to the people. And uh, every time I hear them say that, it just thrills my soul. And uh, Savannah, she called me preacher a while ago, I said, call me grandpa. <laughs> Amen. So that is such a blessing. And, uh, you know, we neither one realized what this day was, but it's been nine years ago today since I last preached a morning message in the church. And I feel so unworthy I feel like, well, these other people that can do a better job than I can, this got a better education than I do, and all this, but all the time I was just making myself excuses. Amen. And, you know, I'm so glad that we have a Savior that loves us, He forgives us. I'm just honored this morning that. I'm a child of the King. Amen. Amen. If you're here today and you don't know of the Lord's own personal Savior, there's no better time if the Lord's dealing with you than make Jesus Christ the Lord of your heart. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something and I'll get on with it. But I was, I'm not going to call the name of the business, but it's a place that me and Betty like to eat breakfast together. I go there a lot by myself while she's working. And there's this lady that was in one of her classes and she knew Betty right off the bat and Betty recognized her and and I'd already talked to this lady and, and made friends with her, aggravated her and stuff and so this morning I'm good at aggravating people, amen. This means yes, this means no, amen. But anyway, uh I told Betty, I said, I'm gonna pull a pull a good one on her. I didn't even know her name, didn't know her that well. So I was getting coffee. I like to get refills on coffee. So I went up there. I said, what's this? So I caught her, and she come to me, and I, I said, uh, I need a refill. I said, but my cup's got a hole in it. And she looked at that cup. She said, where? And she threw it in the trash can, not realizing what was going on. And so I started laughing. She said, what, what are you laughing at? I said, that cup was nothing wrong with it. I said, it's got to have a hole in it to put the coffee in. So anyway, she watched me pretty close now when I go in there. But this morning, I'm going to tell you how things get played back to you. I was out there in the foyer, and I wanted a cup of coffee. Different ones sitting there. I just picked up one. And guess what I did? I picked up one that had a hole in it. And it burnt my fingers. I said, they something. I said, surely I didn't miss a whole cup. And it started leaking. So, I mean, it come around back to me. But I'm telling you, God's got a way of getting you back. But this morning, I was hoping, praying that Betty would be here, but she's having to work. So, y'all remember her in prayer. But I had a chance this morning to actually talk to this lady while she's on break. 
I was afraid she's going to get fired for talking to me so long, but come to find out, she's lost. And she told me that she loved me and Betty and thought, think a lot of us. But anyway, we never know who we're going to run across somebody that's lost. I thought by her actions and everything that she was saved, but her and her fiancé are lost. They have a six-year-old little boy. So remember those in prayer. Amen. I just want to share that with you, but when I got my finger burnt, I remember not to do that no more. Amen. Uh, there's some scripture I'd like to share with you this morning. And uh, I'm not going to preach. I'm just going to share some things with you. Uh, I've cried. i walked the floor. I've tried to uh, change this. And the Lord said, no, you're not. So when He speaks, we got to do what He says. And so uh, I know you said, well, He picked this out for today, and I did not. But anyway... If you, I like to uh, go to John chapter fourteen and they hadn't put it on the screen yet, but that's okay, just a minor technical difficulty. There you go. Computers and everything have glitches too along as long as us. But first of all it says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not where thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man hath come unto me but by the Father. Amen. And in reference to that, backing up to where Peter had denied Jesus, amen, he was telling Peter, not let, not let your heart be troubled. Amen. And you know, we have so many things in this world that are going wrong today. Every time you turn the news on, there's always something bad happening. In churches or wherever it's at, people have no, seem like they don't have any conscience anymore. Amen. But, you know, we can open up the Word of God and we can find comfort in the Word of God. Amen. This, I believe that if more homes had Bibles and more people would open them up and study God's Word, our country would not be in the mess that it's in today. Amen. They said, not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. And in my Father's house are many mansions. You know, on that trip uh, to Flatwoods, uh, we passed by, way up on a hill, a castle. And I was thinking about that, and uh, I was quiet part of the way. Sometimes I talked his ear off. But anyway, I was thinking about that castle. And uh, he told me a story behind it. And I was thinking, you know, I wonder what our mansion in heaven is going to look like. And, you know, our minds cannot comprehend. We have no idea what it's going to look like. Amen. But there's one thing for sure about it. Mine's not going to be better than yours. Yours not going to be better than mine. Amen. And it don't matter who our neighbor is. Amen. We're going to live in peace and harmony. Man, won't that be something? Amen. We're going to be in one mind and one accord around the throne of God. Amen. And I get so tired of going to the mailbox and either junk mail or bills. Amen. And it don't say anything in God's Word. There's going to be a mailbox outside of your mansion. Amen. So there may be male men that, or male women that's delivering mail here, but there'll be no bills and duns in heaven. Amen. Won't that be good? How many of y'all get tired? Amen. Finally, God, an amen. I hit a nurse somewhere. How many of y'all are tired of getting bills? Amen. It seems like you get one paid. They don't, they don't skip. They seem rich. Amen. You're always writing out checks or going to the bank or whatever and paying bills. And, you know, and getting a mortgage, I mean, it's so hard. If you don't have a perfect credit score and a big down payment, amen, you cannot get a home. I mean, our house. Let me prefer to say that different. Amen. But listen, 
I'm so glad that I've got a mansion waiting on me, that I don't have to worry about no down payment, that I didn't work out, I can't earn it, I didn't get it by no other ways except through the grace of God. Amen. There are no mortgages. Amen. Nobody won't be knocking on the door for some months and say, where's my rent money? Amen. And that's, all, that's for everyone that trusts in the name of Jesus. Amen. Not just for me. Amen. I don't deserve it, but I'm looking forward to going home to be with Jesus. Amen. And if I go prepare a place for you, He said, I will. I will come again and receive unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. We're going to be in the presence of God and Jesus. Amen. We're going to see Him face to face. Amen. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Amen. Thomas, there's a lot of people that doubt. Amen. Thomas was a doubter. He said unto him, Lord, we know where thou goest, and how can we know the way? He said unto him, Lord, we know not where thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way. He didn't tell him. He said, I am the way. I am the truth and the life. And no man comes unto me, but no man come to the Father, but by me. Amen. We have to have an advocate. We, have, we cannot go to God just one-on-one. We have to go through Jesus Christ. Amen. When I got saved, amen, I didn't realize what had happened. Amen. And he was talking about being broken a while ago. And my heart was broken all to pieces. Amen. I'm so glad I'm not the man I used to be. Amen. But I didn't really realize what had happened. I knew that when I walked in that church that morning, I had been on a long drunk, and I had a bad headache. I had a migraine. My head was killing me. That preacher had the biggest hands I believe I ever seen. He slapped him right beside me. I about jumped out of my hide. And, and when they gave the altar call, I don't know how I got out of the pew as quick as I did, because I usually don't move that fast. But I had to get to that altar, and I was broken hearted. I mean, I cried my eyes out. When I got up, I did not have a headache anymore. Amen. You've got to be there to realize how bad it is, amen, to go through things like that. But what God done for me, He can do for you also. He not only saved me that morning, He delivered me from alcohol, and He set me on a path that He warned me to be on, not the one I wanted to be on. Amen. And shortly after that, uh, when I got saved, He called me to preach. And I'm not preaching this morning. I just want to share something with you. I want to share part of my testimony. I want to share, this is not what I had planned out anyway. Amen. I'm glad God had this under control. Amen. I had three, four different places to go. See what I did? Amen. When you trust in God, everything's going to work out all right. Amen. And I will go to another place. I mean, I will finally get there. Amen. Got a few more minutes. He told me not to worry about the time, so that's great. In verse 12, Burn of I say to you, He that believeth on me, and the works that I do, he also, Burn of I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name that I will do, that my Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do. If you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. And verse 16 says, and I, and I will pray the Father, and I will pray the Father, and He shall give you another comforter, that He may abide with you forever. In the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth not Him, neither knoweth Him, but know Him, know of Him, for He dwelleth in you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seem no more, but but you shall see me, because I live, you shall live also. Because he lives, 
we can live also. I love that song, Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. He was telling His disciples that I've got to go away. But I'm not going to leave you here alone. I'm going to send another comforter, which is the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of us, that dwells in His church, that we come and we worship Him one mind and one accord and feel the power of God. He's there with us. While we was there at, where we sat yesterday at Flatwoods, Glenn and I survived each other yesterday, and that's, a, that's amazing. Amen. But I was just looking around all the beautiful things all the way up there that God had created. All the, the hills, they don't call them mountains over there, but hills and, and valleys and, and see how God has created this beautiful play for us, place for us. And I cannot understand from my life why people cannot realize that God created this. There is a God. Amen. He's real. Amen. He lives in my heart. Amen. I have never seen Him, but I feel His presence. I can go to Him when I can't go to anybody else. Amen. He's there with me. I never walk alone. Amen. When I go out into the woods, He's right there beside of me. No matter where I'm at, I cannot go on vacation and leave God. Amen. He's right there with us. When I go down the road, He's a driver. Amen. I'm just behind the wheel. Many times I've come very close to having serious wrecks. But the Lord just put His hand between me and the other vehicle and kept us safe. Amen. I love the Lord this morning. Amen. And I don't know if it would ever be possible for me to pastor again. I don't know. I'm just going to mind the Lord, but if I get another opportunity in time, i like to share my testimony and, and give the Word that, that God has gave me. And you notice that I begin to get a little bit tongue-tied. Well, there's a reason for that. It's called nerves. Amen. I don't think anybody else bothered by that at all. But, you know, Pastor Jamie, if he does get nervous, he never lets it show. Amen. And he loves these kids. I'm going to tell you what. He loves them just like they were his own children. Amen. Even the big kids, that, even the, the adults that act like kids. Amen. I like to make people happy. I love to make people laugh. But you know, there's a time and place for everything. Amen. If you have a need this morning, Brother Jamie, I wish you would come up here with me. Amen. Go ahead. Are you sure you know me use that? Amen. Well, they say I got big enough mouth anyway. Yeah, me too, but just hey, at that point. Lord. You know, this is one of the few pastors that gave me an opportunity, and I want to thank them by my heart. Amen. Brother Larry rode in the van with me. <laughs> in the front. Who are you laughing at? I didn't even say nothing. <laughs> I know you're going to. I was going to say something sweet. Okay, go ahead. Uh, well, maybe I might say something funny. There's a bunch of those. Yeah. yeah. And it's about a three-hour ride, so we had a little bit of time to talk. And, That's right. You know, there's so much more to this life than just what we think. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've, I've met a lot of different people, made a lot of different friends, and, and I cherish every one of them. And every one of those. You're my friend, too. Because he is... Uh, if I've ever needed anything, he's been right there. Brother Larry, we're graciously welcome for the opportunity. That wasn't a problem at all. Bless him. But everything Thank he you. said is true. And what we need to realize this morning is that there's so much more to this world than what we see. That's right. You know, even floating down that river or standing on the bank, all that handiwork that God had made. Yes. You know, we just, we just drive by. You know, we're looking. How often do we actually stop and just see? what God's done. Sure. And if you will look deep enough this morning, I think you can stop and see what God's done in your life. Yes. And see the blessings that you have, that you can cherish. Things that you can grab a hold of and you never let go because He's given those things to you. And what an opportunity this morning to do just that. And what I'd like to do is just, just have an altar call this morning. And this is not just any altar call. It's not just one for, let's go down and just pray. It's, it's one to thank God. Just to, just to stop and say, God, just thank you for, for my children, thank you, Jesus. my home, my, my spouse, my dad. My yes. Uh, and just to be thankful for what God's done in your life. Because the more we're thankful, uh, the more gratitude we show toward God, the more He, he likes that. 
because he knows and he wants our, our gratitude. He wants our conversation. So this morning, can we do that? Can we just stop everything else, just let everything else slip away for just a little bit and just be thankful to God for what he's given us? What I'm going to do is I'm going to open this altar. In this, in this altar that we've made, that human hands have built, let, could you let it become the footstool or the, the foot place of Jesus' feet this morning? Could it be somewhere that you could go right to God? And would you take that opportunity to do it? Would you take the time to say thank you? Would you take the time just to say, God, I, I'm not worthy, but thank you. And it may be this morning that you're sitting here and you don't have a clue what I'm talking about. Maybe that life is just not there for you yet. Maybe it's time that you found Jesus. Maybe it's time that all the other stuff just is just moved out of the way. It's just time to get real with God. Time to make friends who are Christian friends. Maybe time to make a life that glorifies God and it's not about yourself. Maybe it's time just to get real. Yes. Yeah. What Brother Larry has told you this morning is that God is real. And he's waiting. And he wants you. And he loves you. He's given you a life and a purpose. Did you find that purpose this morning? 44 years old when I was baptized Father's Day when I was 21. Mm, bless his heart. Today. 23 years. Okay. What will be your day? Will it be Father's Day? Will it be the Sunday after? Will it be the next week? Did you find that? So let me tell you what God's got waiting for you. Many branches. Any rooms, no mortgage, no bills. Sure. It's the place that He has made for you. You're simply take. Would you come this morning? Yes, Would you Jesus. listen to His voice? Jesus. Yes, I'll give you a moment. Thank you. Yes,